I was a student at, at Yale and, and wrote a paper about the, the computerized society that was on the horizon. It was pretty clear then uh, with IBM, uh, you know, installing the, the big computers around that the world was going to change. And the paper was about how this was going to change a lot of things. And in particular, it was going to change the way things had to be distributed and moved to support those automated uh, devices. The solution was, in my mind, to have a, an integrated air and ground system, which had never been done, and to operate not on a linear basis where you try to take things from one point to another, but operate in a systemic matter, manner, uh, sort of the way a bank clearing house does. You know, they have a bank clearing house in the middle of all the banks and everybody sends someone down there and they swap everything around. Well, that had been done in transportation before. Uh, the Indian post office, the French post office, American Airlines had tried a system like that shortly after World War II. But the demand side and the supply side had really not, you know, met at an appropriate level of maturation. By the early 70s, when I had gotten out of the, the service, it was very clear that this new society was, was coming uh, in earnest. And so uh, at that point, I said, what the hell, you know, let's try to put it together. And uh, that's how FedEx came to be. And then from that point forward, the requirements for this type of uh, system were so profound and so big, really for the next 25 years to this date, we've simply been running just to keep up with, with the requirements. And that's what led to the hundreds of planes and the thousands of trucks. I wish it was something I could say was, I was so smart. It was just like Pogo the Possum said, you know, if you want to be a great leader, find a big parade and run in front of it. And that's what we've been doing for the last quarter century. I learned an awful lot in the Marine Corps, particularly about, I think, how to treat people, uh, lead people, um, which has played a big role in FedEx, a big part of the employee relations uh, systems and all that, that we have at our company came from my experience in the, in the service. The, the Marine Corps is the best when it comes to teaching people how to lead other other folks, and um, so it had a profound experience on me. Some bad, some good. When I was uh, in the Marine Corps as a lieutenant, I had uh, uh, come up from a uh, good background, went to fine university at Yale. I, I wasn't exactly exposed to folks that were in the blue collar uh, professions and, and, and occupations, and then here I was in the Marine Corps, and became a platoon leader and I was surrounded by kids like that. I maybe was three years older than they were. I was 21, they were 18. But these were uh, youngsters from very different backgrounds than I was. Uh, you know, blue collar backgrounds, steel workers and truck drivers and gas station folks. And there we were out in the countryside in Vietnam, living together, eating together, and obviously going through all sorts of things. I think I came up with a very, very different perspective than most people that end up in senior management positions about what people who wear blue collars think about things and how they react to things and what you should uh, do to try to to be fair to those those folks. So it, in that regard, it was an invaluable experience and, and a great deal of, of what FedEx has been able to accomplish was built on, on those lessons I learned in the Marine Corps. In retrospect, it was uh, ridiculous to try to put this system together, uh, was, which required so much upfront money and required changing a lot of government regulations, but I didn't know that at the time. And uh, I think uh, probably my experience in the service where um, the, the currency of exchange in FedEx was just money. You know, it wasn't people's arms and legs or, or, or lives. And so my perspective on it were, was perhaps a bit more, um, I don't know how you'd say it, uh, uh, I was willing to take, take a chance because losing wasn't the worst thing in the world that could happen to you. I had seen that very clearly. 
we run out of money and uh, we we uh, we we didn't uh, have all of the regulatory uh, requirements we needed. Uh, my half sisters were up in arms uh, because it looked like we we're going to lose some money. I mean, everything was going wrong except the fundamentals of the business were sh were proving every single day that the idea was right. I mean, every single day the traffic was going up, and so eventually everything came right and worked out fine. We decided a long time ago that percentages were not acceptable to our customers. In other words, 99% sounds great unless you're the 1% who we don't deliver for. So we never talk about percentages. We built a management system which measures problems on an absolute basis. And the secret is as traffic or volume increases, the number of complaints have to go down on an absolute basis. In other words, we've got to get better and better year after year. As time uh, changed and markets changed and people's expectations changed, we changed with them. Uh, for example, when uh, it became obvious that people wanted to interface with, with FedEx electronically. Many years before people were doing this, we built an electronic interface system that allowed them to do business with us. When the internet came on the horizon, we built versions of that that allowed people to interface with FedEx over the, over the internet. And now there are you know, millions of people doing business with FedEx every day electronically. It's not like we're carrying sand and gravel. You know, we're carrying chemotherapy drugs and important manuscripts and electronic parts and, and pieces for airplanes that are grounded. So when we pick it up and say we're going to have it there early the next morning, I mean, we have to deliver. There's nothing else to it. So putting the guarantee in place was much more important internally than it was externally. Because most of our customers, based on the experience they've had with us, they believe we'll deliver. But if when we said to all of the employees, you know, this is guaranteed. If we don't get it there, I mean, we don't get, get paid. The reason I never lost confidence is because I never believed that the consequences of, of losing were, were as bad as some other people might have thought. You know, oh my goodness, I've lost my money or what have you. I mean, I just wasn't motivated along those lines. And I was very, very, very sure that what we were doing was extremely important and was destined to be successful. So that's the definition, I think, of an insane person or a zealot. <laughs> and most entrepreneurs, I think you would uh, find, have that sort of uh, green wire laid in there just a little bit uh, crosswise. And they, they begin to get focused on something and they, they believe in the idea or themselves far beyond what they probably should. We're the thing that binds everybody else together. And successfully navigating from a, uh, a mostly national economic structure to now a global structure <clears throat> with different types of cultures and governments and what have you. I mean, all you have to do is pick up the newspaper and see it every day. It's going to be important that the United States and FedEx, every year that goes by, does better in the way we deal with other cultures and uh, is respectful of, of other people's points of view and makes a contribution and doesn't become one of the problems in the world.